What's up guys, Chris Schwartz Edmondson here from Schwartz Edmondson Web Design. In today's video, I wanna tackle the problem of when you have your header nav centered, uh, there isn't very much room for the links to live, so they wrap. And this is really annoying, and this happens across all screen sizes. It doesn't really matter how big your window is. The chances are if you have more than just a couple links, they're gonna be wrapping. So uh, I've come up with some good CSS that you can use to add to your site and it fixes this problem. So now um, across all screen sizes, you can see the links have much more room uh, to live and they never wrap. So in today's video, we're gonna tackle this problem all while learning about variables, looking at how updating one value can do a bunch of different things. And we're also gonna tackle calculations. So here you can see I'm calculating different things with these variables. But again, I can just update one thing in one place and it's changing a bunch of different things due to the power of variables and calc functions. So it's gonna be a really good one. Let's jump right in. Okay, so I'm here in the 7.1 site. I don't have any CSS on it. We're gonna go ahead and start from scratch. I'm gonna right click and inspect the header and that'll bring up my Chrome inspect tools. And so here we have this header display desktop element, and you can see its width is 100%, so it spans the width of the header. And then if I toggle that open, we have this header title nav wrapper element. And so this uh, gets a width of 67%, and then we have the header actions. So this would be uh, like the button and the social icons. So the header actions get a width of 33%. So you can see 67% plus 33% equals 100% of the width. So remember this header action has 33%. So if we toggle open the header title nav wrapper, this contains the header title or header logo and the header nav. So obviously um, these two things have to equal 67%. So here we have the header title, that's 33%. And then we have the header nav, which is 34%. So the important thing here is that um, the header nav only has 34% of the header to uh, reside in, which is not very much space, only 34%. Like it seems like these links should have way more space to spread out, but they don't because they can never get bigger than 34% of the header with this current layout. So what we wanna do is say, well, these, these elements over here, they don't need that much space. Like look at, Look at how much empty room we have here to the right of the logo. And then same with the button. If we go to the header actions, look at how much extra room we have here for the logo. So these two elements don't need to be 33% width. We could turn them down to 20%, let's say. And then we just wanna make the nav um, take up the rest of the space. So basically these elements here are way too big and we want more room for the navigation. So um, let's jump into actually writing the CSS now that we understand the layout. So two things that I want to um, note is that we only want this to apply when the header layout navigation is centered. So if we added this to a client site and they changed their header layout to let's say the navigation being on the right, we wouldn't want this to apply. So we're gonna make sure that we include that targeting in our CSS, a header layout nav center. And we only want those to apply to the desktop layout too. We don't wanna make any changes to mobile. So I'll also be targeting the header display desktop. So including those two classes, will make sure that we're only affecting the site in the exact use case that we wanna affect it in. Um, so this is an important kind of principle to be aware of when you're writing like plugins, for example. Um, so on all of my plugins, I make sure that, you know, um, if something were to change that's different than the use case that the plugin was meant for, it's not gonna disrupt any other, you know, it's not gonna mess up the site. So now I've targeted the header layout nav center and the header display desktop, and I'm gonna write all my CSS for these elements inside of this, uh, inside of these curly brackets, and it'll only apply to this use case. So the first thing we need to do is target the header title nav wrapper, and since we want these two elements to be 20%, that means this nav wrapper has to be 80%. So I'm just gonna copy that class and I'll target the class with a period and then we'll do flex one zero and then 80%. So flex one zero, 
Uh, and then we want to target the header actions. So we want to have this not take up 33%, we want it to take up 20%. So I'll do header actions, right? Uh, no, I'll just target the header actions in general. And we'll do a width of 20%. And then I need to target uh, inside the header title nav wrapper, we want to target the header title, and it's getting a width of 33%, and we need to change these two things to 20. So I'm going to target the header title, open up curly brackets, and we're going to do a width of 20%. And then we're going to do a flex of 1, 1, 20. Flex 1, 1, 20%. And then finally, we want to target the header nav and make sure that it's not uh, a width of 34%. We want it to be, uh, let's see, so we have, this is spanning 80%. We want this to be 20%. So 80% minus 20% should be 60%. So we want the header nav to be 60% because 60 plus 20 equals 80 plus 20 equals 100. So I'm going to target this header nav class. And then we'll target that with a period, open up some curly brackets, and the width is going to be 60%. Whoops, 60%. And then uh, we want to make the flex 1, 1, 60%. So flex 1, 1, 60%. And the reason that um, we have to change the width and the flex is because the header is using flex box, flex basis is another way to determine an element's width. Um, it, as well as um, the width. So that's why we want to make sure that we're just updating both of those. So this is a flexbox property if you're not familiar with it. Um, and that's okay. Uh, we're not worried about that for this tutorial. So um, now if I go full screen, you can see that because this uh, nav wrapper now has 60% of the header to live in as opposed to 34%, so we've basically doubled the effective space, um, you can see the links are no longer wrapping. And even as I shrink down the screen, 60% of the, he the header is enough room uh, to have all of these four links spread out. And it even makes it all the way down to mobile without wrapping. So we've, we've doubled that space, that available space. So what if you wanted to uh, be able to update this just by changing one item? So like here, if you want to like play around with the different widths, uh, you would have to update every single one of these values. If we wanted these two actions, like the action and the button, to be 15% instead of 20%, then we'd have to come through and update everything and kind of in our head do the calculations. So um, a variable is going to make this way easier to update in the future. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable called logo action size. And if you've never created a variable, um, Squarespace uses the less preprocessor, and it allows you to create these variables. So you do at, and then the variable name, and then the colon, and then you can determine the value of the variable. So in this case, we're, the value of the variable is going to be 20%. And now everywhere we have a 20%, we can just go ahead and replace it with this variable. And then if I update this one variable, it'll update the 20% everywhere that it's located. So that, that's good for these um, percentages here. But what about uh, this percentage here? So we got 80% because it's 80% um, plus 20% equals 100%. So instead of writing 80% here, what we can do is we can write um, calc, and then we're gonna open up uh, some parentheses here, and then add some quotation marks. And uh, one thing that we have to do is escape. Um, our, our quotation marks. So this is, again, this is specific to the less preprocessor. We have to include these things in our calc function. If you look at like an, a normal CSS calc function, it won't include uh, these things here. So I'm going to do calc, and then we're going to do 100% minus, and then I'm going to write at. And this is how you include a variable in a calc function in less. You do at, then open up some curly brackets, and then you do the variable name inside of, inside of that. 
So now instead of 80%, we're going to do a calc function that gets 100% minus whatever minus this 20% value. So nothing has changed there. The math is the same. But now when we update this value, this value is also going to be updated, which is exactly what we want. Uh, and then to get to the 60%, the 60% was the 80% um, minus the 20%. So we're going to do a calc function. So I'm going to copy this. And to get to 60%, basically we have to do 100% um, minus 20% minus 20%. So I'm going to replace this with my calc function. So we have 100% um, minus this logo action size, and we're just going to multiply it by 2. So that um, is the same thing. We still get 60% because we're doing 100% minus 20% times 2. 60 minus 40, boom. And I'm going to do the same thing there. So now as I update this one variable here, because we're doing the calculations and we have the variables, um, everything is going to update just by updating one thing as opposed to uh, having to go through and update a bunch of things. So that's how, like, again, this is another sort of um, thing that I do when I write plugins is um, I try and make them as easy as possible to update. I would never want a client or someone, you know, working on their own site that isn't very adept at CSS to have to go through and update values. That's a recipe for disaster. But if they just have one variable here that they can go through and update, chances of them, you know, accidentally messing something up is much lower. So now we can update this one variable. Everything is looking good um, across all screen sizes. Nothing is wrapping and uh, that na the navigation links have much more room uh, to live. So I hope this was helpful. This is kind of a look into some more advanced CSS with calc functions and variables, um, but you can see it's a very practical uh, application of these techniques. Uh, and so now you can just go ahead and copy and paste this on your site. There will be a link to a blog post in the description down below. So you can just paste that onto your site and update this as necessary. All right, if you enjoyed this tutorial, consider subscribing to the channel if you're interested in Squarespace CSS customization like this, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.